Today's experiment is on weight relationships in formulas and chemical equations. The first part that we're going to be doing in this lab is looking at a formula, which is copper sulfate pentahydrate, written up here. What we're going to be doing with this compound is determining the percent of water in this hydrated compound. So we can figure that out in theory by just using the formula weight, which you would get from your periodic table for five water molecules, dividing it by the formula weight of the total compound, and then multiplying it by 100 to get your percent. Experimentally, what we're going to do is take copper sulfate pentahydrate, which is a lovely blue compound that I have here. You're going to be weighing out a certain amount. You're going to heat it up. When we heat it up, we evaporate the water off it, and we're left with just copper sulfate by itself. The thing, the, when you heat it up, you go from your pretty blue color to get a white compound. This is how we can tell when all the water is released. We're trying to calculate the percent of water. So what we're going to do is calculate the mass of water divided by the mass of the sample. So you're going to weigh between 2.3 and 2.5 grams of your original sample. You'll heat it up. And in theory, it would be great if we could just weigh the mass of the water. But our lab is not set up to capture that water. So we're going to be calculating it by difference. So we'll weigh the compound afterwards. Um, and then by difference, we can calculate the mass of water. Because our law of conservation of matter says the mass of your reactants must equal the mass of your products. So we're going to go ahead and start by weighing out 2.3 to 2.50 grams of copper sulfate pentahydrate. So we're going to go ahead and go over to the scale now. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and first weigh our test tube. So we want to make sure the scale says zero. So we're going to push our zero button and then get the mass of our empty test tube. So the mass of our empty test tube is we have 18.579 grams. We need 2.3 to 2.5 grams. So we're going to go ahead and weigh out our copper sulfate and realize that it should be close to 21 grams. And we're about 20.7, so I want to put a little bit more in. So that looks good. So we would go ahead and record that mass. So we have the mass of our empty test tube at this point and the mass of our test tube plus our compound. So let's go ahead and we'll heat okay, it. Next. So now we're going to go ahead and heat our copper sulfate pentahydrate. Now we have our copper sulfate pentahydrate, our crystals are at the bottom of the test tube. So one thing to help release the water molecules more easily is if we tap the, the test tube and we kind of spread out the copper sulfate as much as we can. Okay, so once it's spread out a little bit more, it's easier for the water to escape from our compound. And then I'm going to use a test tube clamp to hold my test tube in place. All right, so I've got that clamped on here. And notice I clamped it so the opening of the test tube is pointed slightly downward. We want to do that so that we don't lose any of the water as it might be condensing on the colder portion of the test tube. So I'm going to go ahead and light my burner. And I want to demonstrate how you'll be heating your sample. So we'll actually be moving the Bunsen burner back and forth along the test tube, like so. And notice the way I'm doing this, the opening of the test tube is not pointed towards me. So for safety, you want the opening away from you. And for some reason, maybe some of this compound might actually come out. You don't want any of the compound to spill on you. So you're going to move it continuously back and forth the whole time that you're heating it. And you're, again, you're looking at the color. It should be going from blue to a, a lighter color blue to a white color. Sometimes it actually looks a little bit gray. Um, one of the things is you want to make sure that you don't hold your burner too long in one spot is sometimes it might actually burn your compound. So if you can look closely, you can see the water coming out the end of the test tube. So we're releasing the steam, releasing those water molecules so that we'll end up with just the copper sulfate at the end. So you're going to continue to do this until your compound turns white. So let's kind of take a closer look at just the test tube. 
think about some experimental source of error. What if our sample is not heated long enough? What if we spill some compound? How will our calculated percent of water in copper sulfate pentahydrate be affected? Okay, so we can see that it looks like just about all of the blue color is gone from here. Um, so again, we want to make sure that all that blue color is gone so that we know we've released all the water. So it looks like we're just about done here. Um, so one thing again you can also do is maybe rotate the test tube if you need to, spread out the compound uh, to make sure that you can get all of that blue color gone. So now what we're going to do is just turn off our burner. We're going to let our test tube cool. Once it's cool then we'll go ahead and weigh it again. And weigh our sample after heating. So we'll just put that back on our scale and it looks like it weighs 20.336 grams. Okay, so our sample after heating weighed 20.366 grams. So this is the heating when we went from the blue to the white color. So now what you're going to do is you're going to take your same sample. We're going to heat it another five minutes. The reason we're doing this is to make sure that all the water was evaporated the first time. So you're going to heat it another five minutes, cool it, weigh it the same exact manner by continuously moving your Bunsen burner um, across that test tube. So let's say we weighed it the second time after heating and it weighed 20.356 grams. We're going to do the difference between these two numbers, which we can see is 0 0.010 grams. If the mass between your first and your second heating is 0 0.05 grams or smaller, then you're done. You don't have to do another heating. It means that basically there wasn't very much more water that evaporated out. If you have a difference that is greater than 0 0.05 grams, then you need to do a, a third heating. Um, that would be the most you probably need to do. And again, you would see the difference between your third heating and your second heating, if it's 0.05 grams or smaller, then you're done. So now we have the mass of our compound um, after heating. So this is the mass. We can go back to calculate the mass of water that we originally started with. So this mass after heating, this is going to be after your second or potentially third, but generally you only have to do it two times. Um, now we have the mass of our sample before. We have this mass of the sample after heating. The difference between these two numbers is the mass of our water. So now we know the mass of our water. We have the mass of our original sample. We can calculate the percent. In part two of today's experiment, what we're trying to determine is the mass of sodium carbonate that we can produce from a known mass of sodium bicarbonate by doing a chemical reaction. Sodium bicarbonate is also known as baking soda. So what you'll be doing is weighing out a mass of baking soda somewhere between two and three grams. So let's say we weighed out 2.500 grams of sodium bicarbonate or baking soda. We can calculate in theory how many grams of sodium carbonate we can make based on the mass that we start with. So how we would do that is taking the grams of baking soda, our two and a half grams, we can convert that to moles of baking soda using the molar mass of sodium bicarbonate. Again, we get the molar mass by using our periodic table. And those units for molar mass are grams per mole. So we can use that to convert from grams to moles of sodium bicarbonate. You remember grams to moles, moles to grams, use molar mass. Once we have our moles of sodium bicarbonate or baking soda, we can convert to moles of sodium carbonate using our balanced equation. So the equation on the board is not balanced. You will need to balance that. Once it's balanced, it will tell us how many moles of baking soda produced how many moles of sodium carbonate. Once we have our moles of sodium carbonate, we can convert to grams of sodium carbonate using our molar mass of sodium carbonate. So that's again in theory, which is your predicted mass of sodium carbonate that you can create from the mass you weigh out of baking soda. Now in the experiment today, you're going to weigh out the two to three grams of baking soda, and then you're going to heat it up. When you heat it up, you actually release 
water and carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. So in this part, all we need is the mass, what's remaining in the test tube, because the water and carbon dioxide are released, is just our sodium carbonate. When you heat it up, we all know that um, baking soda is white, and after you heat it up, sodium carbonate is also white. So in the first part, we were looking for a color change. In this part, we're gonna do a timed reaction because the color of our two compounds are not changing. So you'll heat this up for 15 minutes, and you'll let your test tube cool, and then you'll weigh your test tube, and then you're gonna heat it a second time, just like in part one, for another five minutes. Let the test tube cool, and then weigh it. That's gonna be your mass after the second heating, as long as the difference between the two heatings is 0.05 grams or less, so you don't have to do a third heating, but if you do, you always use your final heating, the smallest number. Uh, and then once you have that information, you can compare the mass of these two sections. In theory, what should you get versus experimentally? Okay, so now we're going to weigh our empty test tube. We have a mass of 19.495 grams. And in this part, we want to weigh anywhere between 2 to 3 grams of sodium bicarbonate, also known as baking soda. Okay, so that looks good. So our new mass here of the test tube plus the baking soda is 22.272 grams. So now we're gonna go ahead and heat the sample. Okay, so we're getting ready to heat our sample. So you wanna again make sure that you spread out your baking soda as much as you can in your test tube with again, not spilling it out of the end because that would obviously change your mass. Put it in our test tube clamp so that the opening is pointed slightly downwards tighten it up so we don't lose anything and then we'll light our burner and then we're going to heat this for 15 minutes again the same procedure here we're just going to heat this back and forth from one end of the test tube to the other and if you can see we are release, releasing steam out the end you can actually see the steam forming as we do this Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and get the mass of the um, sodium carbonate after heating. So we have 21.227. So our mass after heating for 15 minutes was 21.227 grams. So we can see that drop substantially. We originally had before heating 22.272 grams of the sodium bicarbonate it decreased the mass after heating because again, we lost carbon dioxide and water to the atmosphere. We heated another five minutes and after the um, second heating, our mass did not change very much. It went from 21.227 to 22.226 grams. So very little change here, just 0 0.001 grams, which means we got all, all the water and the carbon dioxide in the first heating. So now we have our mass that we would use that we actually produced of sodium carbonate 